very good, good evening to everyone. Uh, respected chairperson, uh, you leaders, and all my dear friends. And uh, if you see me shivering, I'm feeling very cold okay, today. Okay, so today I'm very blessed and privileged to be standing here before you. To, uh, I also thank God and our youth pastor and youth leaders for giving me this opportunity to stand before you and share something about what friendship means to me. So I'm very blessed and I'm thankful for the program committee as well. And uh, I've been staying in Awiti since more than 20 years and this church is not a new place for me but standing here alone is a very new thing for me. And uh, okay. I'm not very good in public speaking and also taking references from the Bible but today uh, if I make any mistake during my sharing, please do forgive me. So friendship, what is friendship actually? Why do we need it? And what influence does it have, it have over us? Why are we designed in such a way that we need friendship? To understand this, I would like to share about two types of friendship that I think about is genuine godly friendship. And the second one is perfect friendship. Let us go a little deeper into these two types of friendship one by one. Godly, genuine godly friendships. We know that humans were created to be relational and friendship are an important part of our life. But why did God create us to be relational, to live in communities? Why can we not survive alone? Why can't we stay alone? We need friends, people we bond with. It is the greatest things in life. We look at this beautiful creation. When we look at this beautiful creation, Adam, we know that God first created Adam, the male. And God said that it is not good for a man to be alone. I've often thought of it in terms of marriage, in terms of relationship in between a man and a woman. But as I was preparing for this friendship, what friendship means to me, I view it as a compassion, compassion ship, companionship, a partnership, and a friendship. Someone to rely on, someone to keep us company. I believe He created us to live in companies, to join together in relationships and friendship, because He knows that living in this sinful world can be very harsh, especially if we are alone. And so He wants to provide us support systems that point the way to Him. He wants us not only to walk with Him, but also godly friendship to carry us through. The Bible has a lot to say about godly friendships and why we should pursue them. About godly friendships, not about the worldly friendships or the normal casual friendships that exist in this world. Here's why. Friendships are important to us as God had intended. However, there are negative and positive types of friendship for which He wants us to be aware of. Pursuing the wrong type of friendship can pull us away from God. Now how do we recognize, how do we know that whether what we have with our friends is whether a godly friendship or not? Here's how we will know. Real godly friendships are the one who inspires you to grow, who brings us closer to God, who makes us want to become a better person. For example, if we're doing something wrong, we think if we tell that the person might feel bad and we do not correct the person, now that is not a good friendship, that is not a genuine friendship. Now, how many of us have loving, devoted friends? When we think of those friends, how many do we have? When we think about casual friends, there are lots. But true, true, godly friendships are very few. Casual friends is easy to make, but loyal friends takes time. And probably friendship is a thing that we tend to take for granted. True, genuine friendship, who we trust and believe, that they are always there is not easy to come by. So if we have one or more, we should be very grateful. Likewise, we should ask ourselves, am I a genuine friend to those whom I treasure? He is my genuine friend, she is my genuine friend, but am I a genuine friend to that person? We need to ponder upon it. There is not a single one of us who does not need friends, no matter who we are, how wealthy we are, or what position we have in life. Friendship, 
is absolutely a priceless position, but only if that friendship is built on godly terms. Now there is a lot of examples of true godly friendships in the Bible, where one of the stories about uh, David and Jonathan from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. If we all have our Bibles, we can turn to it. I will read out the Bible verses. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 5. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him so much. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a higher rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. Now here in verse 2 and 3 we see how the friendship of Jonathan and David was. David, we know, we know David from the story of David and Goliath, how he killed Goliath with just a single stone. Okay, now here, their friendship did not begin without any reason. Their friendship began from this very incident. As per mentioned in the Bible, he saw, Jonathan saw the courage and accuracy of killing the lad with just one faith, with one stone through faith. Something happened in Jonathan, Jonathan's heart. There was an immediate, instantaneous loving friendship that developed between David and Jonathan. Further, the scripture says, Jonathan and David's heart were knit together. Now let us all ask ourselves the question, is our heart need to anybody? Is there anyone in our life where we can say that my heart is need to him, my heart is need to her? This is the closeness and intimacy that godly friendship that God wants us to have, which we do not find in, in casual friendships. Casual friendships are easy. We meet them once in a while or just talk. But a true friend is something far more important. And it is the will of God for us to have a true godly friendship to live in this sinful, cruel world. Now let us look at what a true godly friendship is like. They delight us. That is, we like being with them. They simply make us happy. When we spend time with them, it feels effortless. Energy boosting instead of energy draining. When we meet them, they just make us happy. It delights us. Number two, the guy of friends that develops us who makes us want to become a better version of ourselves. Number three, the true, genuine friendship is always there with us in terms of sorrow and happiness. Your, our friend might not always be physically with us. We might have a long distance, godly friendship. But a true, a simple, a simple prayer or a simple phone call can make us calm our hearts in times of trouble. True godly friendships are essential for our spiritual growth and well-being and encourages us to obey God. They bring us closer to God. A godly friendship is always looking for ways to encourage, to lift up, to enable us in every possible way. They are genuinely happy for when we achieve something in life. They are not jealous, they are not competitive. Godly friendships revolves around obedience to God and good company. As human, whether we like it or not, we tend to be influenced by our surroundings. When we are around bad company, we say it is up to us if we are on the right path, even if my surrounding is bad. But which is a misunderstanding we have in ourselves. Because in Proverbs 13, 20 and 21, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for the companion of fools suffers harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. It is clearly told to us by God to follow. He wants us to be wise and be with wise people. And now about perfect friendship. Let me ask a question. Who do we think is the perfect one? You can answer it in your hearts. Where will we find a perfect friend? We are all somehow blessed with genuine friends in this earth. Now what about perfect friendship? 
We all know the answer to this. It is Jesus, our perfect friend. He is always he is that perfect friend who always wants the best for us, who always gives and gives and gives. What about us? Are we a good friend to him? Are we giving anything? In the scripture we see Jesus considering us as friends in John 15. Chapter 15, verse 14 and 15. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Here we can see that Jesus calling us a friend. Even during the first worship, we have sang a beautiful song that God calls us a friend. So we tend to feel that we are very blessed to be a loyal, true friend. Then what about Jesus? Will he not be a greater friend to us? Are we not privileged to call him a friend? He has sacrificed his life for our sins. I believe there is no greater demonstration of love and friendship greater than this. He died for us to save us. How many of us will die for our earthly friends? Jesus loves us so much that he, loved, that he died on the cross for us. I believe that the most fulfilling life of someone on this earth is to have both Jesus and God friends. And that is what friendship means to me. To have Jesus, to have Godly friendships, and to have a fulfilling life. May God bless us all. Thank you.